Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate the Besides the Screen Network for giving me this giving me this chance to share my research here. My name is Wen Hao, and I'm uh, currently a PhD student in University of Warwick, Nagoya University, Code to Tell uh, program in Global Screening Studies. As the topic of this presentation is titled uh, "Positioning Cinema in Tokyo's Urban." cultural policies in the 1980s, uh, cinema as culture at meta policy and practical levels. The idea of uh, cultural policy of Bunka Seisaku has its very particular cultural and uh, political underpinnings in the constitution of the Japanese nation after World War II. Uh, in the famous Humanity Declaration in 1946, the Showa Emperor Hirohito a claim to build a new Japan with an abundance of culture. Culture in this context is largely uh, entangled with the violent history of the Japanese empire as a hype of post-war cultural democratization as a reaction towards the nation's uh, militant past. Comparing Japanese national cultural policies between the 1940s to 1980s, However, the discourse of culture had gone through a tremendous transition uh, of meaning. Uh, culture is considered more as an economic catalyst in the 1980s and 1990s. So uh, in his 2001 book, Japanese sociologist Edagawa Akitoshi defined uh, cultural policy as an outcome of the political procedure that represents a degree of organizational volition Within this cultural policy discourse, culture is taken as an administrative object for mobilizing or regulating the target subjects, production, access, and consumption of certain cultural practices. I borrow Edagawa's uh, explanation of uh, cultural policy in this chapter uh, to look at Tokyo Metropolitan Government's cultural planning in the 1980s, and more specifically, cinema's position within its blueprint. So I conduct a discursive analysis of the official documents from Tokyo Metropolitan Government Bureau of Citizens and Cultural Affairs. The reorganization of the bureau itself was a significant landmark of the city's official cultural discourse, served as part of the decade-long governor uh, Suzuki Shunichi's grand urban cultural planning in the 1980s, the act of renaming the former Bureau of Citizens and Living into Bureau of Living and Culture shows the intention of incorporating the concept of culture into the official discourse. It further suggests uh, the active gesture for the metropolitan government to take culture as an administrative object. The first step uh, was to reify culture into the clear uh, administrative definitions for the government. As the Tokyo Metropolis, uh, Metropolis uh, Cultural Roundtable was uh, set by the Bureau as a regularly held event between September 1981 and February 1983. To explore the possibilities of integrating culture into Tokyo's urban planning and setting some uh, concrete policies for the cultural administration. The protagonists of the roundtable were technocrats, intellectuals, and cultural elites since the organizer of the roundtable was aiming to gather specialists from different cultural fields and to explore the possibilities of urban cultural regulation. So before digging into the documents of the Bureau, uh, however, I want to firstly highlight the significances and limitations of my source and my method. First of all, uh, one should not simply uh, in equate the statements made in the roundtable meeting with Tokyo's urban policies in the 1980s. Uh, since these actors uh, of the roundtable all had very different backgrounds and all hold very different agendas while making statements during the meeting. Uh, of course, uh, by reading people's thoughts about culture and people's enunciation of culture's ideal meaning and scope, it enables us to precisely locate the formation of a cultural discourse within the realm of urban policymaking. Secondly, uh, the roundtable and the Bureau's exploration of urban cultural policies might not immediately come into force 
on the administrative level, but were nevertheless proactive and prospective for future references. This is why I call it a meta policy. In order to reify culture, uh, the first major issue was brought up to conceive the idea of culture as a concrete regulatable practices uh, within a to Tokyo specific context. Uh, the differentiation between civilization, bunmei, and culture, bunka, was brought up in the very first meeting of the roundtable. The members had soon achieved consensus to define a culture as something that could be actively created in comparison to civilization as a precondition of urban culture. I argue uh, this not only shows the metropolitan government's strong urgency of regulating culture, and, uh, but also it suggests uh, the creation of culture as a fundament of the city's cultural policy per se. So when considering what can be counted or created as Tokyo's local culture, many roundtable participants have referred to the period of Edo. To invent Tokyo's local culture through the temporality of Edo uh, has reassured the city's essence of culture under the name of tradition. However, such an attempt uh, was always a mission possible in Tokyo's case, since its urban landscape has been destroyed and rebuilt repeatedly since its founding. For instance, the 1923 Kanto earthquake. In other words, uh, the highly modernized city lacks the material basis of preserving the local through culture. To solve this tension between tradition and modernization, uh, the only feasible way was to seek help from the nation. Although traditional arts uh, like folk drama, engeki, uh, cultural practices like visiting the Shinto shrines and participating in the folkloric uh, festivals, matsuri, were uh, mentioned during the meetings, the proportion of these activities occupied in Tokyo's urban lifestyle was too small to be announced as particularly Tokyo's culture. Thus, uh, after the round table, the metropolitan government started to configure the traditional cultural sphere of the city under the name of popular entertainment, Taishu Geno, in order to uh, exhibit the uh, city's succession to the period of Edo and its pres uh, preservation of uh, traditional and national forms of art. On the other hand, uh, some were trying to position, position the city's culture through the side of modernization and internationalization by actively comparing Tokyo with global cities like New York and Paris. Uh, some cosmopolitan actors of the round table compared Tokyo to these mega cities in the West and complained how the city's urban and cultural infrastructures infrastructures uh, were being lagged behind. These opinions had also been uh, largely adopted by the municipal government in its urban beauty projects, uh, showing the official's recognition of the city as an international space of cultural exchange, and also to facilitate the city's global city status economically. Uh, one could also observe the dilemma within the narrative of position in Tokyo's culture in modernization and internationalization. The coexistence of national and municipal cultural institutions within the city always caused trouble for the two governments to negotiate the setting and the source of funding. On the other hand, uh, the overall high rental price of Tokyo's cultural venues and the harsh criteria of using these venues in the first place were fatal for most of the international exchange programs and events while other local governments like Kyoto and uh, Nagoya were more welcoming and easy to access for these events. So uh, what served as a solution of locating Tokyo's local culture was to find a more contemporaneous uh, spatial juncture between modern and tradition, national and international. Shitamachi as a city's old downtown, a loosely defined area of commercial and industrial neighborhoods that retain traces of the traditional social and physical geography uh, was selected by the officials. From the side of urban cultural policy making to choose Shitamachi as a useful past, borrow historian Jordan Sand's term, serves as a spatial mediation of the city's temporal rupture in general. Although many of the attendees of the round table were from fields of modern art, all agreed to a prioritized uh, 
popular forms of art and folk practices as an authentic urban culture. Cinema's role within this uh, whole urban cultural discourse became significant uh, if we look at how Tokyo's local culture was dis uh, so-called discovered through Shitamachi, especially when Yamada Yoji, uh, the short two studio master who nurtured the national heat of the Tolasan series and also a member of the round table, suggested that the daily practices of normal citizens who reside in Shitamachi like uh, Katsushika Shibamata ought to be appreciated more by the authorities. Cinema, like Yamada's uh, Tolasan series, could be seen as a medium of preserving and enunciating the city's Shitamachi spirits. Although uh, cinema and visual image in general could represent and promote a specific Tokyo-ness, as Yamada also emphasized, the medium of cinema itself was too modern, too professional, and too artistic to be practiced as a local culture by the people of Tokyo. From the roundtable discussion, we can also see how cinema was positioned alongside other, form of, other forms of high arts, uh, namely music, fine arts, and architecture. Uh, in the final report of the roundtable, cinema was put into the sub-column of internationality or kukseise. Uh, the report uh, concluded with Tokyo as a capital city of Japan and as a global city opening to the world, will carry the role of facilitating uh, international cultural exchanges and cinema was one of such art forms to be facilitated by the city's cultural policy. After being officially classified as an international medium, both Tokyo and Japanese national government has set up several cultural institutions to further promote cinema as a means of international cultural exchange. I study two cultural institutions here, uh, the Tokyo International Film Festival and its uh, Cultural Promotion Committee and the Jap uh, Japan Foundation to look at how cinema was practiced as culture. I argue the two institutions also uh, represent two types of internationalities in the 1980s Tokyo. So the TIF uh, was implemented in 1985. It was initiated by the Ministry of International Trade and Industry as a sidebar project for the uh, international exhibition exposition of Tsukuba in 1985. Besides, uh, we should understand TIF as a multi-layered cultural economic event. In the municipal level, uh, the major goal was to brand Tokyo as a cultural city for global, for global but mostly Western uh, businessmen and cultural tourism. On a more nuanced uh, war level, the street branding of Shibuya, where the film festival was located, or, uh, should be from, uh, I, I think it should be uh, full grounded. Uh, as Nami Kisadato, uh, as the chairman of the Shibuya Thief Committee, announced to brand the street of Shibuya as young and fashionable cultural center for the festival's audience. The cultural branding of the city is associated with uh, spatial oriented businesses like department stores. According to uh, cultural theorist uh, Kitada Akihilo, culture was introduced into the urban planning of Tokyo and especially the street of Shibuya in the 1980s through the businesses to uh, soften the city's explicit ad advertising landscape and consumerism. As the department stores led by the Cebu Saison Group actively decorated their space with urban cultural elements, the spatial arrangements of the teeth in Shibuya could be seen as an example of these trendy experimentations of media and communication on urban sites in the 1980s. In Shibuya, uh, one can enjoy the teeth by not only uh, attending all the film screenings, but also catching up on a celebrational audiovisual electronic cell in the Malui department store, as well as visiting an art and spirit party with the film director Hasegawa Katsuhiko in the Tokyo department store. It suggests how culture has been subsumed into the developed uh, uh, economic and industrial categories as entrepreneurs uh, reinvented the meaning of culture with consumerist intention. While busy streets like Shibuya served as an imperative node within the cultural economic network. After investigating the economic oriented event of the TIF, uh, let's take a look at Japan Foundation and its very early practices of film festival series. 
including the 1982 South Asian Film Festivals, uh, the 1984's African Film Festival, and the 1989's uh, Asian Film Festival. I argue these events organized by the cosmopolitan actors have brought a different meaning of the official international connection and further suggest the possibility of transnational culture of Tokyo. Examining the establishment and operation of the Japan Foundation, scholar Uptel Vaz argues the institution being inevitably a state agency to promote Japanese language and culture and the ideas and information and to enable smooth relations between countries for the furtherance of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan's foreign policies and Japan's international relations. The actual film events of Japan Foundation in the 1980s, however, highlighted a more cosmopolitan facet of the institution's cultural practices and allow us to see the gaps within the diplom diplomatic project. These film events were organized by cosmopolitan subjects. Uh, according to Tezuka Yoshiharu, the film scholar argues the cosmopolitan art subjects uh, being those who actively constructed their uh, cosmopolitan identities vis-a-vis -vis, uh, national identity to make sense of their own lives and achieve social recognition. The chairwoman of its committee was uh, Kawaki Takashiko, the most important figure in Jap Japanese cinema's international exchange history, besides uh, the head of Tokyo's first independent film venue, Iwanami Hall, Takano Etsuko, who uh, also worked collaboratively to circulate and distribute uh, films in these festivals. Film critic Sato Tadao also played a major role in the programming of these festivals. Before bringing these films back to Japan for screening, Sato uh, had actively utilized the opportunities and fundings provided by the Japan Foundation to travel to different countries and do research and collect information about local film culture in each country. Uh, co cooperative events like symposiums, interviews, and magazine discussions were also carried out by Sato to discuss issues like national cinema, international politics, and film aesthetics. These events, including the major film screening, were carried out with little economic concerns, but served as a platform for Japanese film practitioners and audiences to get familiar and get in touch with filmmakers from less developed countries. However, a squabble between uh, Sato and the film director Oshima Nagisa reminds us the limitation of cosmopolitan subjects under institution commissions. Uh, in an opening discussion between Sato and Oshima, the latter threw a poignant question to Sato about his programming of the Asian Film Week in 1989. Oshima complained to Sato that he should not name the event with a political language. The naming of Asian for Oshima shows the Japan Foundation uh, its uh, international cultural politics being obviously derived from the US-centered free world narrative within the Cold War context. Uh, in response to Oshima's uh, critique, Sato had to admit the limitation of programming and organizing film events under the cultural institutions like the Japan Foundation. Harking back to the subject, I argue it is important to consider the cosmopolitan subjects as important actors who configure Tokyo's cultural and specifically cinematic sphere. It has reconfirmed Tokyo's supreme status as a node of international cultural network. Not only all the major events like symposiums and talking events were held in Tokyo, but also the film screenings were having longest running schedule in Tokyo than other local cities in Japan. These cultural exchange programs further introduced the city to foreign filmmakers and facilitated further connections between the cultural actors. One example of such transnational connection is through the space of Iwanami Hall, where many foreign films were later, uh, were later uh, introduced into Japan's normal theater realm. However, in terms of uh, urban cultural policy, cos cosmopolitan internationality did not receive the same level of attention and support from neither the Jap uh, Japanese national government nor the Tokyo municipal government. Uh, the foundation eventually had to crowdfund it from the private businesses and citizens to gather enough mon money for their public events like film screenings. 
So here is my conclusion and a short summary of my presentation today. Here's my sources and bibliography. And I'm very much thank you for listening.